Hello everyone, my name is Fanja Purnama as you know me and on this video I would like to present my main research. On this slide I only have three sections which is the introduction, previous and remaining works and the summary of all of these. So the topic of one of my research is from my professors is called the dynamic content synchronization in distributed learning management system where there are nine conference paper which states about this topic and one journal paper. It's called Dynamic Content Synchronization Between Learning Management System Over a Limited Pandemic Network. Now let's start with the introduction. So this topic is about e-learning. And for those of you who doesn't know what e-learning is, based on my opinion, e-learning stands for electronic learning, which is the use of electronic devices in the learning and teaching process. Although the field of e-learning is very big, but I only focus on the part of the e-learning, which is about online course. So, different from face-to-face -face class, which is illustrated on the left figure, online course, which I'll is illustrate on the right figure, you can conduct them at any time, at anywhere, for as long as you have computer devices connected to the internet. And today, there are many software applications to manage this online course, which is called Learning Management System. The most popular one, um, based on my opinion experience in universities in higher education, is Moodle. Although there are other open source LMS such as eTutor, Camilo, Docio, Sifran, and Ilias, and there are also some other LMS which are commercial. And one famous one is by a Massive Open Online Course, which is called EDX. Based on my experience, the advantage of online course is a flexible learning activities where you can read materials, discuss in forums, submit assignments, and perform quizzes online, and teachers can collect a rich amount of data from that and perform analysis for educational purposes. Although the challenge is about creating a well-designed content which is very difficult and requires effort, experience, and time, and the solution for this challenge is to open and share contents among authors like open educational resources. So when implementing an online course server, why do we need a distributed system? If we use a centralized system, there will be many bottlenecks and students from regions with uh, bad connectivity will not be able to access the server. But we use a distributed learning management system, each student can access the server on its local areas and they can follow the online course. After we have distributed learning management system, we need to perform a synchronization um, in order to update the learning contents. Case 1 can be a replicated system, or case 2 can be a non-replicated system, where for example one university wants to share contents to another. And whenever the content is updated, the other university needs to update their content, So, which is why synchronization is necessary to keep the contents up to date. To, mean, to keep the quality of the education. Here are some lists of the researches where I derived the background, but I will not discuss this, so you can pause the video if you want to see this. Based from what I read from the previous work and the literatures, here are some problems that I derive, which I will explain more on the next slides. Here I will just mention which is about duplicate data because of recurrent revisions, revisions during collaborations, busy, high cost, slow speed and unstable network, various LMS and different versions, rigid content sharing, demand for micro course, and advertisement system. And the essentials are copyright, privacy, reliability, and security. Again, these are references to the problems mentioned. You can pause the video, but I will continue. The next section is about the previous and remaining works, what is done and what is yet to be done. Starting from this slide, I would like to address the problem of learning content sharing and recurring provision of dupli or duplicate data. It is called dynamic content synchronization because the content is revised every time and every time the content is revised, it is shared to other servers. But without a standard method, there will be many redundant data where the servers already have some part of the data, but they will still have to retrieve all of it. So we need to a uh, differential algorithm such as the rsync algorithm to eliminate this duplicate data. On this publication I implement, implement them on Moodle, back, on Moodle backup 
and on other experiments I experiment them on other LMS course content backups. In the early work before that previous slide, they handle the directory and database directly and so they perform a differential synchronization between the database to find the difference between the SQL tables. And after some while they finish their method and publish it on the journal paper and they call the method dynamic content synchronization between Moodle 1.9 between the Moodle table data within the Moodle databases. And this is the figure which you can see which can be found on the journal paper. And later on they try to increase their application to work on Moodle 2.2 up to 2.3. And on this uh, conference paper they list the difference between the Moodle tables of each version in order to perform the synchronization correctly. Uh, so the status is complete and there are remaining problems such as uh, optimizations only. So not so important. And the next work is about the revision during collaborations where everybody, all the servers want to modify or update the contents. So there will be arise some like uh, update conflicts and version problems. So we need to implement a distributed revision control system on one of the previous work they implement a git framework and some other work they implement an SVN for me SVN and git they are quite similar which is about the CPU revision control system to handle the version conflicts and the versionings so for this case I say the status is complete and need some interface and experiment of the content versioning which is left to be touched the next problem is about the network issue. So on this figure, I it from the from their conference paper, they handle the unstable network using the email system, where they send the differential updates. So the email system is uh, known to be robust, where if it's where if the connection fail, it can just send a, it will know and it will resend again. However, for me, the status is incomplete since it haven't touched on the optimization. For example, the bottleneck, it is still a unidirectional or bidirectional synchronization, not multidirectional. And it haven't touched about the busy network. And the, about the unstable network, there is an in inefficiency, which is about the repetitive transfer. And of course, the simplest one though is the no compression. So about the problem of the bottleneck, we in, instead of a unidirectional or bidirectional which can cause a bottleneck on one server, the solution is a distributed or multidirectional synchronization, for example a P2P network or something equivalent to distribute the resources. Although I said that the synchronization is necessary in a distributed learning management system, however the urgency is very low, which means that we don't need to do them on a busy network and we need to do them on a free time. So we need a algorithm called idle time estimation so the synchronization can be done on an idle time. And on this general paper, this is how they propose how to estimate the idle time. Even though the unstable network is already handled by the mail system, but there is still some inefficiencies. For example, repetitive repetitive transfer may occur whenever the work whenever the connection fail or the network fail. We need to resend the file. So the solution for this inefficiency is a partial transfer or a split. We split the data into many splits. And then we send only, we send part of them uh, bit by bit. And after that, we need to use a uh, integrity or a file integrity checker to detect which part is already sent, which part has not been sent. So whenever the connection fail, we can continue the download instead of restarting the download from the beginning. Although compression is a very simple issue, but it still makes a difference. For example, I tried to perform on a course backup file 
and an uncompressed which is about 34 megabytes and if you compress the files it can reduce up to below 31 megabytes or even below 29 megabytes depending on the compression algorithm on this slide i would like to mention about the rigid content sharing that not all the authors and the teachers are it professionals so some of the previous work uh, proposed using a publish and subscribe system to make the content sharing more flexible so the authors will just need to publish their contents on the system and the teachers need to only subscribe to the system and get the contents and receive some regular updates however the status is still incomplete because the teachers have a high demand for content of interest and micro courses set which i will explain on the next slide so the content of interest is something like the teachers are not interested in the whole course but they are interested only in parts of the course so they need to do so there is a necessary to divide the courses into blocks or into sections which is called micro course some call it or maybe to revert them back into a basic learning objects and about the different LMS and different LMS versions I managed to handle this problem by changing the approach of database uh, differential synchronization to the dumb and upload based synchronization because all LMS have the export and import feature we can use this feature to uh, back up the contents and then we perform a differential synchronization between these two contents well I consider this status is incomplete because we haven't touched the cross LMS and cross LMS version synchronization although this is a very interesting and uh, maybe highly demanded but this is the most complicated problem of all of them here and to be honest I don't even have a clear idea how to handle this but only I just know that we need some standard to standardize the learning contents SCORM and TIN can already have this idea by standardizing all the contents of the LMS into the SCORM engine or the TIN can and once we have a standardized content, this content will work on any kind of LMS. Though it's still uh, it's still vague, but it's worth a try and still need more investigation. And finally, the essentials that is not yet addressed, although privacy is mentioned every time, but there is still no experiments and doesn't show any data. Same as the reliability and the security. And this copyright is else is interesting is not yet mentioned but it's interesting that we can prevent the course contents to breach some sort of copyrights by using a plagiarism tools to measure the similarities and crawl to the web it will not be perfect here but it will work on some extent and to summarize what's done and what's yet to be done the duplicate data has been handled by using the differential or erasing algorithm for the revisions during collaboration is solved by implementing a distributed revision control system and for the network for the unstable network it is partially done using the email technologies but is still inefficient and in which we need to perform a partial or speed transfer to increase its efficiency for the busy network we need to to make an idle time estimation and for the cost of the network and for the bottleneck we need to perform a multi-directional synchronization or distributed and for the simplest of all we still need to do a compression technique and for various LMS and different versions I did do the dumb and upload based synchronization to solve that but I don't, we don't have any concrete uh, idea how to solve the cross LMS and versions for the rigid content sharing the previous work proposed a notification system to make the content sharing more flexible although the teachers are demanding for content of interest and micro courses and there is the essential for the copyright privacy reliability and security and after all of this we need to combine all of the items into one because all of these are done separately and after we make the complete application then there is need for evaluation and implementation thank you